there it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. And as you can see, I have a very special guest with me. This is the Ferris Z3X, and this is the GCI Turf Mowdown Showdown. So if you're new to the channel, be sure and like, subscribe, and share. Tell all you buddies in the lawn care industry, we have a very unique opportunity. We have 14 of the biggest, baddest stand-on mowers made here in America. I do want to be forthright and say this is not a paid promotion. Uh, Ferris or any of these other brands have not paid me anything. I don't get to keep the mowers or nothing like this. I'm doing this on my own dime, on my own time. Now this is not a competition style review. We're not really gonna say who's the biggest and who's the baddest and who's the best. We're gonna take a group of categories and go through them individually one by one and give each category a score from one to 10. And then hopefully that helps you decide which machine might be best for your business. Now I understand you might get a lemon every now and then. And I know everybody has bad experiences with, with some of these brands, but I ask that you be respectful in the comments. American hands, American families build these machines right here in the United States of America. And so something negative said could potentially down the road affect that in some way. Now I know that's a strange way of looking at it, but it's my way of looking at it. So for that reason, I ask you to be respectful in the comments. Okay, so to start the categories off, I always like to start off and give you one word, and that is my initial thoughts of the machine. I cut my grass with it uh, two days ago, my fescue and my bluegrass back there, and just got done cutting my neighbors over here and cutting my father-in-law's yard and um, I'm gonna have to break my rules okay if, if you're a rule follower you'll just have to overlook this you'll have to forgive me I'm gonna have to break my rules because I am absolutely torn on two words I can't I can't figure out which one I want to say uh, because both of them have the same weight uh, to them uh, and I, again, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't mean to be disrespectful to any of the brands. I don't mean to show any brand favoritism. This is the first time I've ever been on a Ferris mower. A rider, a zero turn, a stander, a walk behind. I've never used one in my entire life up until two days ago when I cut my yard in the bluegrass. And then, of course, today when I cut uh, my neighbors and my father-in-law. And I, I, I cannot decide which word I want to use. I just went in there and ate lunch and sat down and just really thought about it really hard. And I'm torn. So, so you, I'm going to give you two words on this one. So first word, finally. Finally, a stand-on mower that actually rides pretty dang good. This thing, I absolutely love the way this thing handles and maneuvers and the ride quality. We'll get into that a little bit further in the video, uh, but finally, I mean, all this suspension stuff right here, it's just not just for looks. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And the second word is different. This mower is just different. Okay, when we, when we get into the uh, categories, the individual categories, and we start dial, diving in and digging in deep to the machine, uh, I'll give you my take on how it's different. Uh, and, and again, I gotta make this clear. These jokers don't pay me a dime, okay? Uh, if I can't sit here and tell you the, the truth and be forthright about something, then I don't want to do any of the videos, none of them. And it's going to sound like I'm raising this mower way up here above all the other mowers. And you can take it for what it's worth. But like I said, at the end of the day, it's my job to give you a very truthful and a very honest response. Now, there are some things I don't like about this machine, okay? There are things I don't like about it, and I'm gonna tell you what they are. But uh, when we get to, you'll see. 
let's just get into the categories and you'll see. So category number one, bad to the bone. That is the aesthetics of the machine, how it looks to the eye. Uh, again, I've, I've said this a dozen times already. I'm gonna tell you again in case you forgot. You don't buy a machine on how it looks. You buy a machine on how it performs and how it generates income for your company and how efficient it makes you, you or your employees. That's why you buy a machine. I just thought this would be a cool little category, kind of give you my take on how the thing looks. And you guys know I'm a muscle car guy. I, I love hot rods. I've got two Mustangs, a Fox body, and then I've got a thousand horsepower uh, GT in the garage. And I, I'm f fanatic about horsepower. I've been drag racing cars for, forever. And I like that horsepower in your face. I'm going to rip your head off look. You know, that. You know, you're at the beach at the strip and you see this hot rod going down the, the street just beating the ground. And you're like, whoa, look at that. That's how I see these machines when I'm talking about the aesthetics. I wanna know what looks cool. Right off the bat, it gets a 10. This is a crazy good looking mower. These rounded fenders back here kind of hugs the tires. It's got a pretty wide and stocky short stance kind of like it's had some lowering springs put on it and then this you cannot miss that right there the, the, it looks to be stainless steel uh, but it's not painted okay it's not painted and that makes it stick out you know like if you got a big old jacked up truck and you the suspension up under it you can see all that stuff up under it and you're just like whoa look at the suspension on that thing that's what i see right here or traction bars you know when you got those old hot rods with the big fat uh stickies on it on the back and it's got those traction bars or a dragster that has wheelie bars coming out the back end that's what i see right here when i when i see all this this contraption I don't even know how home max point that is so cool so hands down uh, the aesthetics the look of it it gets a 10 it looks really good now the color eh, I'm not a red guy I'm, I'm not crazy about the red color but that is what it is so the next thing is build quality and uh, of course this thing's made in America and that's a uh, uh, just a major, major plus in my book. But when I look down here and see the build quality, I, I see a tremendous amount of engineering. I see uh, someone really thought this through because this suspension, the way the front end tilts back and forth and these bars are connected to it and then that's connected to the deck a little bit here and there. It's just a very, very unique design. And so I see, in, I see exceptional engineering right here. Uh, right off the bat, I see that. The welds uh, are extremely good. And of course, I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again, you, you'll, you'll get that across the board. Because again, these are made in America and I, I firmly believe Americans take pride in their work for the most part, most, most of us do. And you're gonna see that represented on, not only on, on this Ferris, but on all the m machines. Uh, I'm pretty sure this has some robot welds in it. Uh, again, if a human being can make that weld that consistent over however many welds are on the frame here uh, they're a pretty dang good welder uh, this looks to be like a two by two uh, frame two by two square tubing frame and uh, it, it I, I do want to say this it's complicated okay there's a lot going on here a whole lot going on here uh, I can see a lot of different adjustability in these bars right here and of course I would imagine I don't know this for a fact but I would imagine if some of this is off or comes out of adjustment then it could probably affect the performance of the machine um, any, anytime you have anything that is um, highly detailed okay let's let's say let's talk race cars for a minute you have a dragster a, 
a top fuel pro dragster with 4,000 horsepower. That's a very detailed engine, a very detailed car. So you have to automatically expect the maintenance level to go up higher versus say a thousand horsepower car daily driver like I have in my garage the maintenance is not nowhere near uh, as high so when I look at this even though I see superior build quality I also see a lot of maintenance that could potentially happen right here so that could be a negative do you trade off maintenance for performance you know that, that's something you have to decide I can't decide that for you build quality um, Build quality, I have to give this a 10 uh, because of the ingenuity and the engineering that I see everywhere from front to back. It has all these little intricate details in the build that just, it, I can't give it nothing but a 10. It's, it's built like an army tank. Okay, so for the next category, let's go to the toolbox. And this is gonna be ease of maintenance. I like to take the deck all the way down when I'm looking at changing a belt. Uh, you can see the battery right here, super easy to get to. Um, one thing right off the bat I do not like. In order to take this guard off right here, I have, uh, that's half inch right there, half inch screws I have to undo. These are half inch bolts right here that I have to loosen. I'd much prefer to see a wing nut here, like a plastic molded wing nut, so that I don't have to have any tools. I can do it all by hand. So let me go get a wrench and we'll take this off. Yeah, see to me that's too much work. Uh, I don't, I don't want to have to have a half inch wrench to take this off. I want to just do it with wing nuts. So let's look up under here. I'm looking for the idler pulley, which is massive, by the way. Here's the deal. Uh, what we do in our company is we'll do basic oil change, basic belt changes, uh, battery, obviously. Uh, every once in a blue moon, hydraulics uh, work. Um, typically, we'll take it to the dealer for hydraulics. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at this from a one-off perspective. I, I have never fooled with this. I'm just going off 20 years of changing belts, okay? And I wanna get down here and try to figure it out on my own without any outside help so that I can say, eh, yeah, it's super easy and it sucks, it's kind of difficult. So uh, looking at this, it is one single serpentine belt, which is wonderful. I like that, but there has to be some way to get something in here to torque this. There it is, right there. I just felt it. All right, so you can see the tensioner pulley right here. Well, if you follow that, see my hand right here? If you follow that up under here, I can feel it. There's a half inch drive. Uh, is that half inch drive or three eighths drive? It's one of the two, but you would take like a, a pry wrench, uh, to a pry bar with a half inch uh, socket drive on it, uh, square head drive, whatever you call it. You would put that up under there and that would be what you use for leverage to pull this pulley back and the belt just flops right off. So now that I found that, that changes my whole perspective on changing the belt on this thing there's a gracious amount of room up under here to get your hands down in there to do anything you want to do with the belt system i think i think this is pretty easy on a belt change so next is the air filter uh sits right on top of the engine like the majority of these you just pop it off, pop it off, that comes out and you swap it pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Next thing, let's look at changing the oil. Of course, there's a lot going on here, so I'm trying to find the oil filter in here somewhere. And man, I just cannot see an oil filter anywhere. Let me go check over here. Hmm. Well, dang, 
I don't think the thing has a, oh, here it is, right here. Now, of course, I was joking with you on that. This is game-changing stuff, in my humble opinion. This is the Vanguard oil, oil guard system, and I, I don't, I didn't study the details of it. I don't know the intricate details behind it, but in a nutshell, it is my understanding that this thing is the oil. This has all the oil in it, and it keeps it circulated through the motor and back into this. So your volume of oil is much, much more than just having the oil in the block of the engine. Therefore, allowing you to run the machine longer in between oil changes, which is amazing. I mean amazing. This thing should be on every single piece of equipment. Not talking just lawnmowers. I'm not talking just, I'm talking skid steers and tractors and uh, ABI forces and Ventrax and any lawn care equipment on the market. This thing right here is bad to the bone. Uh, that is amazing that you can have the, the reservoir outside the engine and look at look at how easy it is to get to i mean it's right here and then when you want to change the oil look look at how stinking easy that is this is what i'm talking about ferris uh i realize this is a vanguard system this i don't know that if ferris owns this or if vanguard engines owns this setup but hats off to whoever does because this is absolutely phenomenal uh i am absolutely in love with this thing that's 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 big time in my book so the hydraulics uh, right here are your two reservoirs uh, for filling if you're low. Uh, extremely easy to get to. I mean, how much easier do you want it? Uh, I, don't, I don't think it could get much easier than that. Now I do want to say something is I hire people to cut grass. I don't hire mechanics, okay? So when it comes to changing hydraulic filters and stuff like that, even as much as hydro hydraulic fluid change, uh, I mean, a lot of times we take that to the dealer, but looking for hydraulic filters in this thing, here's the gas tank. So I know it can't be uh, right there. Let's see, let me go over here to the other side and see if I can see it. Usually when you follow the lines from the reservoir, that will take you to a filter, if there is a filter. And I'm just simply not seeing a filter. It could very well be back behind this framework, uh, but I don't see it. I would definitely take this to the dealer to get the uh, filters changed and the hydraulic system flushed and, and uh, new, new fluid put in them. So ease of maintenance, uh, battery, super easy. Hydraulic fluid reservoir, super easy. Uh, belt, uh, seems to be super easy. Oil, uh, super easy. Uh, I gotta give this a 10 on ease of maintenance. It is uh, extremely easy to maintain. Of course, that is coming from a one-off perspective. Okay, like I said, I haven't dug into the intricate details on all this stuff. I'm just kind of looking at it uh, from a common sense perspective and from a 20 year experience perspe perspective on you know dealing with all kind of equipment. And this thing seems to be super easy on the basic maintenance. So again, I'm gonna give it a score of a 10. Okay, so next category, let's talk about the ingenuity, and this is like the design, the layout of the controls, the functionality, ease of use, uh, height of cut adjustment, how easy that is, uh, fuel tank. So overall, I find the controls to be 
quite pleasant, okay? Uh, as far as the functionality, the way everything works. The layout of the controls, in my opinion, are terrible. I do not like the layout of it at all. Let's go over the layout first, because as you know, I've been very hard on the, uh, all the different machines on the layout. And when I'm in the cockpit, I want to be able to get to everything without having to exert a lot of energy doing so. Uh, yes, the height of cut is, is in a good location if you're left-handed. Now, I'm ambidextrous, I can do it either way, but I prefer it on the right, and I prefer the parking brake on the left. Now, obviously, that's personal preference, so you can't let my personal preference affect what you think. But as far as the layout of the parking brake and the height of cut adjustment, I wish they were reversed. I, I would love to see it reversed, but you know, that, that's an engineering thing. It's not my decision to make. But the the ease of use is is pretty good. It is, it's not bad at all, uh, considering like I went back to it, I don't have to move a lot to get to it. What I don't like is the PTO and the throttle. The key is in a wonderful spot. It's right here where I can just reach right here and grab it with no problem. Why can't this PTO be right beside the key? Okay, why? Can somebody tell me why? Because when I look up in there, I don't see any reason why it couldn't be. You're talking four inches. Move the thing down four inches. The same thing with the throttle. Now this has a very unique throttle. It's not your typical push forward. It's a push button throttle. So you can hold the button down and it throttles up or you could mash it, let go, mash it, let go, and it throttles up a little bit each, each time. I actually like that. Uh, it's more of an electronic throttle uh, as opposed to a manual cable, but the position of it sucks. It's not in a good spot because if I'm getting off the trailer, getting ready to mow, I'm just kind of easing along, I'm about half throttle, quarter throttle, and I need to PTO on. Look how, look how I have to get to it. So I have to reach down in between here to PTO on and then I have to switch hands and then I have to throttle up okay that's just too much work I mean you got this freaking bad to the bone mower and I have to fight getting down in here to throttle up and turn my PTO on Ferris put the thing back here on the back that way I can use one hand I'm, I'm easing off I can sit right here and pop my PTO off and, and, and move my finger three inches over and throttle up and then I'm gone I'm, I'm, I'm working full speed then so for that reason uh, you know I've, I've I haven't cut any machine any slack on this. I'm not going to cut the Ferris any slack on it. Uh, I'm going to give it a score of a 7 for the layout because it should just be better than this. As, as far as the PTO and the throttle, there's absolutely no reason that I see, again I'm not a Ferris engineer, but I don't see any reason why it can't go back here on this very back row so that I have perfect easy access to key PTO throttle. They should all be right here in a line together. Now let's talk about the ergonomics. Uh, you know that um, I operate these machines with the palm of my hand and the inside of my thumb and then this front bar I kind of you know, grasp it with my, my front of my hands right there, front of my fingers right there. I find the size of these bars, I'm gonna say that's about a half inch diameter, roughly. I think they're pretty comfortable. Um, the one thing that really stands out to me on the ergonomic po portion of this is this front bar has one, two, three, four adjustments, four, right here. Uh, the back bar does not appear to have any adjustment added at all. And of course, this is a machine where you have a, a front fixed bar and a rear fixed and the controls go 
toward the front for forward and to the back for reverse where some of the other ones machines will have a fixed center bar and the controls pull backwards and then a, a separate set of controls pull push forward of course that's personal preference i could care less but it don't matter to me on that i can run either one of them but i do like the ergonomics and the way this fits my hands i fairly decent sized hands and I really like this that I can control uh, not only control my speed with this but I can set it to where it fits my hands perfectly and it would fit several different people's hands perfectly obviously you have to take into consideration that the further back this front bar goes you leave you lose ground speed okay you're gonna lose speed you trade speed for comfort in that that situation um, if you've got a real high profile yard and you have an employee and you don't want them to mow it wide open, then you say, all right, you must mow this yard in setting two. And you know, obviously you have to trust them then and put it in setting two. And that way they can only go so fast when they're mowing it. Uh, maybe hillside mowing where you need a little bit uh, slower speed maybe, that adjustment might come in handy. But as far as the ergonomics go, uh, it's a huge positive because I can adjust it to where it fits my hands just right. Ergonomics on the uh, Hyder Cut adjustment, uh, it's like a rubbery type material and it's very, very pleasant on my hand. Uh, and, uh, you know, some of the machines have metal and have the, the texture on the metal and it can be a little raw, a little rough on your hands. as as soft as it can be. The parking brake seems to be about the same, the same style of rubber, but it actually has a little bit of texturing to it. But that, that's no effect on the comfort and how it feels in my hand. It's actually pretty soft, to be honest with you. So as far as the ergonomics go, uh, the thing just fits me very well. Um, I honestly can't think of anything I would want to change on the ergonomics as far as the way it fits my hands, the controls actually fitting my hands. Uh, I got to give it a score of a 10. Ease of use, uh, it's pretty easy to use. I mean, if you can, if you can, uh, if, if you're like me and you like a left hand parking brake, right hand uh, height of cut adjustment, if you can get past that and, and train yourself, that this parking brake is right and now I'm doing my height of cut adjustment left uh, it makes it pretty easy to use except this the, the layout of the controls the PTO and the throttle kind of play into ease of use a little, uh, to some extent and I'm just simply not a fan of that I mean if I'm if I'm if I'm moving along a little bit and I want to pop the PTO on yeah it seems simple enough where I can stick my hand in it and pop it up and then stick my hand but it's just too much switching when it could be easier if it couldn't be easier then it you know it might change my outlook on it but i just i i don't see any reason why i mean the throttle could go right here it's a matter of plugging it into the cad drawing and programming the machine when that when that thing cuts out this plate cut the rectangle back here instead of up there and the same for the pto uh, so for that alone uh, ease of use i'm going to give it a score of an eight now height of cut adjustment ease uh, i think i figured this thing out okay you'll see when we're talking about uh the actual physical height of cut and the accuracy you'll see i had a little bit of trouble with this uh setting over here but i think i got it figured out now so again when we do the uh accuracy height of cut accuracy you'll see i had a little bit of trouble with this but the way it reads is two two and a quarter two and a half, three and two and three quarter, three, three and a quarter, three and a half, three and three quarter, four, four and a quarter, four and a half, four and three quarter. So they actually go at a diagonal uh, pattern, which makes that much, much, much simpler to understand now. Um, over here it says, 
plus half an inch I was thinking plus half an inch to the numbers on this side but it's actually still to the numbers over here so if it's this is two inches and plus half an inch is right here that's gonna make that two and a half so once I got that part figured out it wasn't that bad now I do find this to be a little bit heavy okay this you have to kind of muscle this thing back and then when you pull back on it push the tab and let it down it's got a good solid lock good solid retention right here uh, I do not see any type of spring oh yep there's a spring assist over on the right side over here but it's not a very big spring at all and I find this to be a little bit heavy I mean you got to think every time you pull this thing up you're pulling up a chunk of deck so if, if that thing if this thing could have one more spring over here on the other side the left side to make this a touch easier I think that will be a winner winner chicken dinner uh, but the uh, height of cut adjustment ease uh, I'm gonna give it an eight because like it's it's a little bit heavy you really have to muscle that thing to get it back now the fuel tank really don't get a score uh, there's really no way to score that but here's your fuel uh, fuel cap right here and the fuel tank is dead center uh, I like it you know, pretty much one of two ways either dual tanks on each side so that you have more capacity and the weight is evenly distributed or the middle tank getting bad as long as it's a pretty good sized tank and uh, so that one's in the middle I have no idea what the volume is on it you have to look on their website and see that for yourself so uh, we're gonna go over in the garage and we'll look at the height of cut range and the height of cut accuracy so we get up under the deck here and what we're looking for is anything kind of abnormal uh, you know, that's not really uh, traditional as far as a deck design goes. Now, one thing off the bat I see that is different. See this leading edge right here? It's straight all the way down where a lot of these machines, it follows the contour of these, these blades right here. And that seems to be a little bit different. So we'll obviously have to pay attention to the way it side discharges to see if this is an improvement over uh, your traditional deck. But you can see right here, basically the exact same design where the blade follows this curvature. Same thing in the middle, same thing on the far end down there. And then of course you've got some of the waviness right here for the deck to follow that contour. But this, this really sticks out to me that's pretty different you can see that straight edge all the way down so i think they call this the icd uh, indigo charlie david uh, cutting system uh, deck so i'm 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 interested to see what this is about uh, no striping kit back here um other other than other than this right here it looks pretty similar to other decks i do have quite a bit of airflow space from the leading edge to this plate back here uh, one thing i did notice about this that stuck out to me is uh this thing's heavy this is a heavy front end on a mower i used to have a jeep and that's the winch that i used to take the top off the jeep and every single mower so far I had zero issues picking the front end up, but that thing struggled uh, to get the front end off the ground on this one. So that tells me that the front end on this thing is a little bit heavier than most. All right, so let's look at the height of cut and you can see we're at five inches when it's all the way up in the lock position. And then we're here at, then you got four inches, three inches, two inches. And I'm assuming uh, that is one inch uh it doesn't over here i've got an inch and three quarter uh so i'm just gonna assume that's one inch and yeah it's adjustable in quarter inch increments so you can see here's a plus a quarter so if you're four and go here it's four and a quarter three three and a quarter two two and a quarter 
Now, if we strictly stay inside the measurements as it's laid out, two inches is as low as we can go. But we're going to see what this pinhole is just to see. All right, so that's not starting off real good. <laughs> uh, that pinhole, that lowest adjustment, uh, that lowest setting right there is reading a tad under two inches. All right, so let's go in the two inch setting right here. And, huh, not much difference there. So that first hole really doesn't really make a difference. Uh, just a pinch over two inches, maybe two and a quarter. Now let's check the three inch setting. And we're just a pinch over three inches, about three and a quarter roughly. Four inches. And pretty much dead spot on four inches. I mean, it really can't get any closer than that. And we'll leave it all the way up uh, to check the five inch setting. I like this, extremely accurate on the height of cut. Accuracy, I was very impressed. Uh, this was one mower that uh, when it was on four inches, it was pretty much on four inches, although a smidgen off, you know, quarter inch, uh, eighth of an inch or so. Uh, so because it's not dead perfect, I'm gonna give the height of cut accuracy a nine. Now let's talk cut quality. Uh, this thing cuts phenomenally. It is a incredibly good cutting machine. Uh, I've mowed the grass in the same conditions with all the machines that is dry to the touch. Uh, obviously it might rain a little bit, but I let the grass blades dry physically to the touch so that the grass is dry, so that it's even keel across the board. Uh, my bluegrass here, my fescue uh, bluegrass rye mix, and the blue back there and then my neighbors and my father-in-laws and what i look for is inside the tire tracks uh, i'm looking for scragglers and those are little tiny blades that maybe just stick up here and there here and there and i'll be completely honest with you i had to look extremely hard to find one extremely hard and the cut quality on this thing is exceptional uh, the blade tip speed i have no idea what it is on paper but i go by the the, the noise that it makes I'm, I'm listening to the blades turn and those jokers are rolling i mean rolling so i don't know if it has something to do with the way this pulley design is because some of these pulleys are a little bit bigger and chunkier than what i typically see uh, but the cut quality on it is just absolutely amazing it, it has a great cut quality on it I found that mowing full speed in my neighbors and my father-in-laws it cut just as clean at full speed as when I'm put putting along in my yard so um, I, I have no choice but to give it a score of a 10 for cut quality because it cuts that good. In the Battle of the Blades category, uh, side discharge, I was probably more impressed with this than any other thing. The side discharge on it looks a little different than, than some of the other machines. It's hard to explain uh, because when it comes out the deck, obviously you've got your leading edge, but I don't know how they make it do this, but it kind of tapers out some to the left into the front of the mower, like it's throwing a curveball or something. And then the back, it, it fans out in a, in a traditional way. But what I noticed is it scatters it in a much wider area uh, compared to some of the other decks. And I like that because that means I don't double cut. That's what you want when you mow in a little bit of grass that may be a little bushy or lush or thick or tall. You want it to cut it clean and you want it to scatter the clippings out so that it leaves a good visual appearance for the customer. Because if you have excessive clippings laying on top of the grass, you, you have to double cut it. You have to go over it again and chop those things up even finer so that you have a good visual appearance for the, for the customer. But I didn't have to do that with this mower. Not even in my, as, as lush and as thick and as dense as, as both of these turf grasses are, I mowed it one time and I'm like, wow, that looks really good. And the side discharge in the Battle of the Blades category that has to be the most impressive. Um, 
I had no option but to give it a score of a 10. Uh, I, I can't. I don't, I'm not an engineer, so I don't know how I can improve it to make the thing side discharge better. I don't think it could side discharge better. So it's, as far as scattering the clippings out over the turf, it is absolutely phenomenal, and it gets a score of a 10 from me. Now, of course, on stripes, uh, you know, it, it's physically impossible for me to film every single machine in the exact same conditions, meaning sunny, cloudy, uh, the sun being at two o'clock versus six o'clock or whatever. I, I just can't physically do that, okay? I don't have that kind of time on my hands. But with that said, you, you simply have to go off my 20 years of experience in saying, yeah, a machine stripes good, or it stripes okay, or it just don't stripe at all. And ho hopefully you can trust me on that. Uh, when I talk about stripes with this machine, uh, I can't remember, I don't think, nope, there's no striping kit back here. But I do see holes back in the back side of the deck, and the back side of the deck is straight all the way across. So potentially you could add one, uh, but you're looking at the stripes right here, and these are two days old. Uh, like I said, I mowed, it, mowed my yard two days ago, and th this is what is left of it. I find that it stripes really well. Um, I don't know that I would label it uh, top performer in the striping category, but uh, it's, it's way on up there as far as being one of the top striping machines. And the bluegrass back there cut at two inches, striped very well. Uh, also, uh, I'm, it, the thing stripes really nice, really good. I don't see my pattern, my, my, my lines aren't, you know, super dark on one side and, and lighter on the other side. It's a good even stripe across the whole, the whole pattern. So uh, striping, I'm gonna give it a score of a nine. So the next category is smooth operator. And I've been wanting to talk about this one. I've had it in my mind since I started making this video. Um, you know, to date, you have heard me beat up all of these manufacturers on ride quality, okay? Ride quality is different than comfort, in my opinion. Comfort is when I'm in the cockpit of the machine, regardless of how it rides, regardless of how the, the, the machine reacts to the ground, am I comfortable here? In the, in the operating position. That's why I've got these categories uh, separated. Ride quality is how the thing rides across the ground, how it accepts bumps and unevenness and that kind of thing. So let's start with ride quality. I gotta get this out of the way. The thing rides very good, okay? Uh, I did have a few instances in my neighbor's back, back there, where it got a little squirrely on me, okay? The reason it got a little squirrely on me, this is an extremely fast mowing machine. I mean, lightning fast. And you can only mow so fast, okay? We're, we're trying to do the neighbor and my father-in-law in more of a production mind frame mindset. How fast can I get those yards cut all while giving the, uh, the customer a, a quality job? And I've run the thing wide open in the back back there at my neighbor's. That's a very, very rough piece of ground. And it handled all of it pretty good except for a few bumps that I was going so incredibly fast <laughs> that the thing just kind of glides right over it. Now, of course, I hit a few back there, and of course, I hit it with all the mowers, and it, it kind of jars you and throws you off, but it's manageable. It's not like it's gonna throw you off the machine type uh, bad. And that's the suspension up here. This thing, this front bar with the casters on it is on a pivoting type 
uh, mechanism bolt in the middle of the frame right there and so the front end can go up and down like that that's the reasoning for these bars right here to keep all that in check I assume those bars you know it kind of doesn't let it go but so far but the ride quality is absolutely phenomenal in comparison to any stand-on mower I've ever been on in my life. Not in, now I'm not talking about just the mowers I'm doing in this review. I'm talking about any stand-on mower I've ever used in 20 years. Uh, the ride quality stands out on this machine. Uh, the back end, I kind of get the same as I get with the rest of the machines. The back end's a little rigid. Uh, it's because it's basically like a straight axle truck. And uh, it just, it's no give back here, no suspension type thing that I can see. And so when you hit a bump just right, you're gonna feel it in the back end, whereas you don't feel it that much in the front end. And the front end does a lot of compensating for the back end. And I've, I've found that to be very, very true uh, over here in my neighbor's field and in my, my, my father-in-law's yard in his ditch, he's got some kind of rough areas and I had zero issues with that. I still don't think it's perfect. I don't think it's a perfect ride. It's not gonna be like getting in your Cadillac and riding to church on Sunday morning. It's not that kind of smooth, okay? It's still a stand-on mower. But uh, in the grand scheme of things, as compared to any mower I've ever been on in my life, I have to give the ride quality of this machine a nine. I, I can't score it higher than a nine. Uh, I definitely can't score it lower than a nine, but I, I can't score it higher than a nine because uh, if I give it a 10, that means you're gonna think it rides perfect and it does not ride perfect, okay? The ride quality is not perfect. But as compared to what I know about mowers in general, uh, the, ride quality, it, the ride quality is just absolutely exceptional. That's all I can say about it. I was actually blown away at how good the thing rides. So uh, for that reason, I'll give it a score of a nine. Because this thing rides so good, that relates to how comfortable you are in the machine. When you come right back down here, there's a spring back here. And look at this, uh, I don't know what you call that thing, but it's adjustable. All this is adjustable back here so that you can adjust it to your body size. Meaning, you know, I'm not a little guy, I'm 250 pounds, 6'1", and I may need to adjust this to fit me as an individual but that that's really really cool right there because that's going to absorb a lot of the the flaws in the ride quality so the comfort and the ride quality kind of play off of each other and because this machine rides so good the ride quality is so good on it it increases the comfort and and ferris has had the ingenuity to, to put this spring thing back here so that it can be adjusted to me me personally my size and that even furthers the comfort of it and of course you know all the machines have these big nice thick pads some of them may be a touch thin this one seems to be nice and thick and it's really hard when i dig my knees into it it's kind of hard for me to feel the backing on it and that's what i want i want to be my knees to have full cushion uh coverage instead of digging in and hitting that hard piece of wood or poly or plastic or whatever it is for the backing so overall the comfort on this thing it, for me as an operator is extremely good it's a very very comfortable machine to operate and uh, for that reason i'm gonna give it a 9.5 again i can't i can't give it a perfect score of a 10 because i don't think the comfort level is perfect uh, but it's dang close to it i'm telling you that now so next category is talk about the horsepower uh, that's going to go over the hydraulics on the machine and of course the engine ain't much i can say about this it's 37 horsepower of pure fuel injection and it does not lack in any way the grass over here in this corner is a little bit thicker a little denser it gets a little more shade 
and it plowed through it like it wasn't even there. Uh, my father-in-law's yard where his septic system is, <clears throat> the grass typically grows twice as fast there. It just plowed through it like a hot knife in butter. Uh, zero bogging down whatsoever. Uh, the, the horsepower on this thing, it, it's there. Hydraulics, you know, I'm a big hydraulic guy. Uh, uh, I love the sensitivity and the feel and the responsiveness of a hydraulic system. And uh, I've said this before, I'll say it again. When I, when I give a hydraulic system a command, or the controls a command, and I move this one forward. I want it to be instant and I want it to respond immediately. And when I stop, I want it to, to do the exact same thing. I want it to obey what I'm telling it. I want it to do as I'm commanding. I don't want lag and a little bit of uh, delay and things like that. I'm, I'm not a soft hydraulic guy. I like hydraulics that are very touchy and very feely and very sensitive. Uh, when I'm running a track hoe or back hoe or motor grader or, or um, Ventrac or ABI, it, it doesn't matter what, or more any machine I run, I'm the guy who likes super delicate, super touchy filly, sensitive hydraulics. So you have to keep that in mind. If you don't like that, if, if you know, sometimes that can be a little jerky, if you're un unstable with your hands and it gets a little bit carried away, you know, your, your arm could do a little jerking or the mower could do a little uh, jerking around on you. Uh, so if you like softer hydraulics, you need to take what I say into consideration. The feel of the hydraulics, I find there to be a slight, very slight delay and when I push them forward and when the machine reacts. Now that could very well be in the linkage. You could adjust the linkage to where it's absolutely dead on. But once I get past the first quarter to a half an inch, roughly quarter, I'd say quarter inch, then they become extremely responsive. I mean, like very touchy feely. And I like that a lot. I, I really, really like the hydraulic setup on this machine. I find the same to be true in reverse. When I'm, when I'm backing up, I have a, a slight bit of hesitation and they kind of kick in gear. And again, I think that could be linkage. And you know, some of that you might can't work out. I don't know. I'm, I'm not the engineer. I could get up under here and loosen some nuts and bolts and play around with it and try to get it to where I want it. But the way the machine sits and the way it came to me, there's a little slight bit of a hesitate, little slight bit of hesitation uh, in in when the res the hydraulics respond ver as to when I give it the command. The sensitivity is very good. Uh, once I get going and once I'm in the forward moving position, any slight little bit of, of movement with my left hand or my right hand, I get pretty much immediate response out of the, the, the wheel motors back here, immediate. And, and I like that. I like that super uh, uh, response, super sensitivity uh, that, that, these, that these hydraulics give. Same kind of goes for the responsiveness. Uh, you know, they're very, very responsive. Uh, one thing I did like about it, and I'm not, not sure that this is by design, and I don't know that if I just like these hydraulics so much that I paid more attention to this or, or I was I may be fabricating something in my own mind I don't know uh, but I didn't didn't really get this with some of the other machines but I did get it I know for a fact I did get it with this one is when I when I make my turn and I'm going into full throttle mode and I and I go ahead and slam it down and hammer down you pick up speed incredibly fast. I mean, it's like out of the hole, like a hole shot. Hole shot, this thing does it. I mean, it really takes off really quickly. And so that, that's a testament, I believe, to the motor 
being able to make these hydraulics back here work, uh, maximize the way they work, so that when I when I slam it forward and, and really get after it, I get up to full speed uh, almost instantly. So one thing I don't like about the hydraulics is the spring tension on them. These things are a little bit tight uh, when you're running it and it has a load, uh, hydraulic pressure load under the con controls here. They're a little bit tight. Uh, I did find that when I got done cutting my father-in-law's and my uh, neighbors over here, my hands were maybe a little bit tender. Now I don't have tender hands, trust me. My, my hands are, are very calloused and very worked. But uh, I, don't, I don't know uh, how to word this other than tender. They were a little bit sore, maybe, uh, as, a, as compared to some of the other machines. Because, because I found that it takes a little bit of muscle to, you know, to get this thing going and to do that. So I don't know if that's a, you could potentially put a little bit lighter weight spring on it so that the, the, the forward pressure isn't quite as strong or, or it doesn't have quite as much resistance, if that makes any sense. But that, that really is my only complaint about the hydraulic system here. I gotta give you the hydraulic system a score of a nine. It's just a very, very solid, very good hydraulic system that, that fits a hydraulic system like I like it. So this is not really a scored category because you either got it or you don't. It's hold my sun drop. Uh, you know, you're out there working, busting tail, and you get thirsty. Maybe you want a beverage, uh, sun, maybe you want a sun drop or a cup of water or a bottle of water or whatever it is you drink. But unfortunately, Ferris, I don't have anywhere to put that. So uh, I think that needs to change i mean why would you send someone out on such an amazing machine and expect them to work all day in 80 90 degree heat and they can't grab a cup of water or a bottle of water and and have a sip while they're cutting the grass to kind of cool off so you know definitely i think there needs to be a cup holder uh somewhere on this and i do believe there's you know you could mount one here uh, you could possibly mount one up here somewhere. I don't know. You, that's for your engineering department to figure that part out, but I'd love to see a cup holder on it. I've had two categories uh, scheduled for two separate videos. One was a torture test, which we were going to take all the machines over at my brother's. And after thinking about that a little bit and the time frame I have to work and get that done. Uh, we're almost mid-July now, and we're kind of running out of time, and I've got three more machines to go through. I need to get them back to the rightful owners. So I don't think we're gonna do the torture test, so I apologize uh, in advance for that. The will it stick category is hillside mowing. I still do plan on doing that, where we're gonna take it uh, to a shooting range. All the machines we'll take to the uh, shooting range and do them all in one day. All that'll be in one video. So last one is the verdict. Uh, this is kind of my overall thoughts and my final thoughts on the machine. So this is how I wanna paint this picture and how it, as it relates to uh, drag cars or muscle cars, race cars. Let's say you're going to the drag strip and you have a car that's a thousand horsepower daily driver, something like I have, and you go out there and you just think you're bad to the bone and you're out there just outrunning all the the you know the, the normal cars and then all of a sudden this car pulls up over here and you're like wow look at that thing and you hear it and you're like whoa and then by luck of the draw he's over here beside you getting ready to go down the strip light goes red yellow 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 green and you kick it and he kicks it and you get your doors blown off that's how i want to describe this machine this is an extremely good mower Again, uh, this company, Ferris, they don't pay me a dime. Uh, uh, Boone Tractor in Danville, Virginia, a dealer sent me this mower. Lance sent me this mower. Uh, I don't know if Ferris even had anything to do with it. 
But with that said, I have to be brutally honest that um, this is a top of the line stand no more. It, it, it is what it is. Uh, it, it is a big block. Hmm, gosh, I want to say it so bad, but I, I know when I say it, it's going to, I don't want to be disrespectful to any, this is a big block among, among small blocks. That's what this is. Uh, the machine absolutely stands out in several categories and it would make anybody uh, that is in the mowing profession an extremely good mower as long as as long as your likes and and the way your business is structured and the equipment that you like to spend your money on lines up with the things i've said in this video if the things i've said in this video don't line up with how you run your business or, or what you look for in equipment then this mower isn't for you okay plain and simple but my verdict my overall opinion on the machine is just wow it's uh this is a good mower a really good mower i've had a lot of fun cutting grass with it and i can't wait to get give it to my guys and let my guys try it and my guys are actually uh taking all the machines out uh three crew leaders taking all the machines out and they're going to be scoring the machines on all the categories as well just like i have so uh, that way you don't you don't get just my take on it you get four people's take on it so um Again, I, I can't give this machine enough credit because uh, it's just, it is absolutely top, top tier in my book. So that is the Ferris Z3X. And again, uh, like, subscribe, and share. Tell all your buddies. Uh, they can come over here and they can go through and watch all these different videos of all these different machines that are fabulously made in the United States of America. And you know, hopefully at the end of the day, something I've said about any particular machine uh, helps you in some way so that you can make a smart business purchase a business decision uh, meaning a purchase that uh, particular more fits your business and at the end of the day you know, it's not about what I say I'm just giving you an opinion uh, on what I think about each machine it's what machine or what mower fits your business lines up with your business model lines up with the type of properties that you mow yet all that has to be taken into consideration so when I say a mower might score a 10 in a certain category you know, that category may not even be relevant to the properties that you maintain. So you have to uh, keep that in mind. So as always, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch. I'll check you later.